Hey, this is Aaron Weekend Modder. Uh, I'm here with a video today, a little bit of an update, trying to give you guys a, a, a little bit of a clue of what I got going on here. Um, I'm running uh, two cameras, so here hopefully, and I, I get this all figured out, you should be seeing my ugly mug in the lower corner, and then uh, you know the main actual interesting stuff here too. So I thought, nobody wants to look at me, we want to think about interesting and Xbox stuff, that's the only reason you're here. So. Why shouldn't I do an Xbox or talk through one a little bit at least while also providing some information about what's going on with Weekend Modder in specific? So what we've got here just to uh, holler it out is this is a Trinity motherboard that's already been wired up with the Nandex. I've already dumped the NAND using the Nandex to copy the NAND image to my computer. Um, I've did, you do that twice and then you verify that it all works. Uh, then I written, I've written back an ECC file, but as you can see, I don't have a glitch chip installed yet. So that's going to be my next step. I'm going to install this Ace V3 chip into this Trinity, get it glitching, and uh, move on from there. So that's what I'm going to be doing while I talk about this uh, send-in stuff, uh, transition and stuff with Weekend Modder. So what's going on with Weekend Modder right now is that we moved websites from... I had an old... Uh, what was the shopping cart platform? So the old store was built on a shopping cart platform called OS Commerce, and it worked okay, but it wasn't, uh, or, or my installation of it wasn't um, HTTPS secured, uh, so I couldn't really effectively do credit cards. I had to loop it through like a third-party site that redirected to Amazon. Um, so there was there were some complications. So this new site is using a different shopping cart platform. And it is already fully HTTPS secured, so you should see that little lock in your browser anytime you're on uh, the store.weekendmodder.com, uh, because obviously you want to be secure when you're on a store when you might spend money. Uh, I think that totally makes sense to anybody who's, you know, think. So I'm going to be adding uh, X key services for sure. Um, although I stock minimal X keys, but if that business picks up, I, I can stock some more. I'm straight from uh, China. Um, so X keys for sure. DVD flashing services for sure. We'll go back on there. Um, and then possibly some dual NAND. I have about five or six Demon Dual NAND chips by Team Executor. Dual NAND if there's enough interest, but I want to say that with the, the emphasis on Dual NAND is an expensive service, one, for me. Like, I, I'm not the cheapest guy out there for RGH in the first place. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not. I'm not going to be the absolute cheapest guy. But what I am going to be is honest with you about anything that happens with your console. I'm going to work to be fair as I can. And 99.9% .9 of the time, what I am is a reliable way to get your console modded and back to you in 10 business days guaranteed through Amazon's payment protection and all that sort of stuff. So um, I think my $75 price is, is very fair, uh, but obviously people can, can make that judgment for themselves. Um, the dual NAND will be very expensive. I'm, I'm talking probably $150 range sort of service because uh, it's very tedious, very time consuming, and if there are any issues, requires a lot of troubleshooting that can be super, super time consuming. So uh, when I say expensive, I think $150, maybe more dollars. Um, I'm not 100% not sure. And it's going to be pretty limited supply because... Um, there's not a whole lot of dual NAND stuff being done, I don't think, these days, because people hold the same opinion that I do, which is that dual NAND is kind of dumb, uh, or not dumb. It, it's an awesome technical achievement, but it it's not a super functional um, sort of thing. When you have dual NAND, first thing you do is you add a layer of complexity, because you have to, uh, if you do any sort of... Uh, modding on the RGH side at all. I'm looking for my tweezers. I'm not just stuttering. Here we go. If you do any modding on the RGH side at all, and when you built that NAND you didn't change the KV, uh, then there's a very good chance that the first thing you do with a dual NAND, the first time you go online, the, you're going to ban your retail side of your NAND. Because uh, by default, a lot of the tutorials out there, and a lot of people don't know what they're getting into, and they they end up People end up uh, having to 
deal with a retail NAN that's no good anymore because it's been banned because they built the RGH NAND using the same KV and they went and got that banned. So having them both on one console means you have to be extra careful with that original retail man to never uh, expose it as a, a modded console. Whereas if you had two physically different consoles, the chances are they're going to have completely different NANs um, unless they've been, you know, buggered to be the same. Uh, but two separate consoles means your retail console is never exposed to the risk of a ban. Uh, and if, if a retail console gets banned in a, a dual NAND setup, then the console is effectively no longer a dual NAND because what you have then is a retail band, which you can't do anything with, and an RGH. So you still have an RGH, but you, don't, you no longer have a retail. The other thing is that a lot of people think that there's some superpower that you get with a dual NAND console. Like you can go online without using stealth. Well, you can on the retail side. But on the RGH side, you don't get any additional powers. You don't get any additional, um, you know, like secret sauce for going online because you have a dual NAND. No. What you have is two consoles in one. You have a RGH console, and then you turn your console off, and you flip a switch, and now you have a retail console. That's all you have. You have two consoles in one container. Um, anything that a re retail can do, your normal console can do. Anything that an RGH can do, your RGH can do. So thinking that you're getting some special thing by having dual NAND is way off the mark. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, coming up for the Weekend Modder is going to be an Xbox 360 Mega. So this, this chip is a new uh, chip that I saw on the price list from my Chinese supplier. And uh, I hadn't seen a lot of information. I did a couple really quick Google searches. I, I wasn't super effective at it at all. But when I re-upped, uh, I ordered five of these bad boys. And I've got a few consoles to do here. So very directly, I'm um, not sure exactly how soon, but very directly, I will be performing an install of that. And I will be sure to turn it into, um, if not a... If not a tutorial, at least a live, full, on the air, or, you know, complete install. Um, oh, I guess the last major thing is actually about the website. Um, so the store.weekendmodder.com is slowly taking over for everything. Even the send-in services are going to be there soon. Um, and when that does happen, is actually going to be based on... Um, when that happens, when the send-in services goes away entirely, with send-in services dot weekend monitor dot com, when that one goes away and is completely replaced, will actually depend on when I finish up these last couple of send-ins that I have. So I actually have a couple of them that were still ordered through that site, the old one, uh, that I haven't completed yet because they just came in. And there's a couple that got ordered on that site that I haven't even received yet. So it might be two or three weeks. Uh, but once that is done, um, all those orders are shipped out and I'm confident that website's no longer needed. I will actually just turn it into a redirect back to the store.weekendmodder.com. For now, what I did is I uh, blanked out the send in services page and put in a giant link to the RGH service that replaced it on the website. Um, also, cool timing, we're basically done here, and uh, I just finished getting this console all together and done and whatever, um, minus uh, programming the uh, Ace V3 chip here. So I think what we'll do is program that real quick so you guys can see this thing boot Zell for the first time. That would be a, like a cool ending for the video, uh, an appropriate ending, right? So that didn't work. Let's see. So these things are really fickle. This is those, uh, uh, what do they call them? Super NAND flashers. They're, they're a Nandex clone. They use the exact same Nandex drivers. They appear to JRunner as a Nandex. So you can actually see on my, my screen over here that says Nandex uh, because that's what JRunner thinks this thing is. Um, let's see if I can get my camera back. Sorry, guys. Um, so... Uh, I'm going to use that with this little cable that I've already got rigged up so I can do this kind of safely. 
Uh, I'm going to use that to put the pins in these points that program on the HV3, and then I'm going to program that bad boy. The timing file that I use with a Trinity in the HV3 is the SRGH timing file that was developed by 15432. Uh, he posts out of teamx360.co.uk. He's got actually a section of that site. And uh, I use the Trinity 300 megahertz timing underscore 60.6. And then the file name is TR underscore L underscore 0 0.6 underscore T underscore 60.6 and the portion of that that's different when you look in that folder is it's just like 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 that's all that changes so I use the 0 0.6 file 99% of the time occasionally I have to revert back and use the 0 0.5 file because it'll provide better boot times but most of the time the 0 0.6 file is on point so we just program the timing file uh, and then now we're going to go ahead and boot her up. I think you can see the, uh, the power thing there. I'm just going to use my little IR remote control and power it up. And you can see our light flashing. Oh, I should plug in a, a, a LAN cable here. So this one, the boot behavior looks like it's behaving a little bit like maybe one that might actually go back to the 5 file. But there's our successful boot and if I turn on the uh, multi monitor on my my monitor here real quick you can see that we're on Zell. So there we go. I don't want to show off somebody's CPU key here. Uh, so there we go. There's Zell. It's booted up. You can see that. And uh, yeah, so cool. There's some updates to the uh, Xbox stuff, and then there's uh, there's a console boot in Zell for the first time, so that's kind of cool too. All right, dudes. Um, I guess dudes to people, um, YouTube subscribers. Talk to you later.